Hey guys, this is Simon, just bringing you a follow-up review of the Celestron Nexstar ASE telescope. Uh, a lot of people, when they review products, they'll have the product for about two or three months, they'll review it for even less amount of time than that, they'll review it and they'll never bring you a follow-up review. So that's what I want to do today, is uh, follow up on one of Celestron's best telescopes on the market, and it's actually their best-selling telescope. So I want to show you how it's done over about four and a half years that I've owned it. Uh, through extensive use and uh, show you, you know, the pros and the cons and just give you a, a follow-up review on what I like about the telescope, what I don't like, and some things that I would recommend for it. All right, so the big question probably is, how did the mount hold up over four and a half years? You know, you got the gears, everything working in sync to power the telescope. That's probably the thing that you would think would go the first. Uh, so over the years, like I said, it's had extensive use and it still works really, really well. In fact, I've never, uh, never re-greased it or anything. The only issue that I can tell is right as the scope begins to track, you can hear the, the gears uh, clinch just a little bit, but then it goes on tracking just fine. So the mount has actually held up remarkably well over the years, and it's actually pretty impressive how durable it is for an amateur astronomer. It is the perfect telescope for an amateur astronomer simply because, well, it's a Cassegrain. It's eight inches. Uh, what more would you need? Everyone needs an eight-inch Cassegrain. And it's very, very durable and reliable. You're not going to have to worry about it breaking really on you as, as I've put it through extensive use, and it's worked just fine for me. Now, obviously, if you're watching this video, you probably already know this is an eight-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. But that's another reason why I love this telescope so much, is it is an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain. They are amazing telescopes. They should be in every astronomer's inventory. They're lightweight, they pick up a ton of photons, and you can see a ton of stuff with a Cassegrain, all in a really short and small package. So if you don't have an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain, that's something I would recommend that everyone has. I mean, M31, easily visible. M11 gives great views. M13, all of your Messier objects, you can basically see with an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain from dark skies. Uh, awesome views of the moon. You can put a focal reducer on it and get even wider views. Uh, I just can't say enough good things about an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. This one's been great to me, and I've loved it. So I. No matter what kind of telescopes I have, big or small, refractors, Newtonians, whatnot, 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain, I will always, always have an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain in my inventory because they are so portable and just such good telescopes for how much they weigh. The Nexstar Plus hand controller has been Celestron's go-to hand controller for quite some time now, and it's actually been nice that they made these flash upgradable so i know it's not a, a huge point that oh you know you can upgrade your hand controller but it's been nice over the years not to have to buy a new one to just be able to uh, stick your rs232 uh, cable in here connect it to the celestron firmware manager update it and you're good to go with the latest you know updates for your telescope so that's been nice to not have to buy a new one um, and the hand controls work great um, no no issues with the led over the years, and uh, that's just a, uh, a quick run over of the hand control and the mount for you. So just to let you listen to the gears here, I'm gonna, gonna move it around for you. And it pretty much sounds the same way it did on day one, which is really, like I said, it's really impressive. Altitude and azimuth. Still sounds really, really good. So at the beginning of the video and throughout this whole video, you may have noticed that I have a guide scope on the telescope. And you're probably thinking, why do you have a guide scope and an auto guider on a altitude azimuth mount? Why would you put this Orion Starshoot in here? And there's a good reason for it. And I never really realized it, even in my first video on this telescope, until I just thought about this the other day. Uh, I was always kind of confused why they had an auto guider port on there as well, because if you auto guide, you're still going to get some field rotation in your images strictly because it is an altitude azimuth mount. Well, so as I thought about this, uh, it hit me that in years past, Celestron actually made an equatorial wedge for the 8SE. And so you could actually put the wedge on here and align your telescope 
uh, equatorially, which would allow you to auto guide. And I thought, oh, that's really, really neat that they incorporated that uh, into the, the 8SE so you, you could save a ton of money by not buying an equatorial mount and get a really lightweight uh, astrophotography setup with an auto guider port on it. And I thought, man, that's really awesome. Unfortunately, Celestron has discontinued those. So, I mean, you can't buy that particular wedge, but now that they came out with the Evolution series of telescopes, uh, the, the wedge for that, they actually made it compatible with the 6SE and the 8SE. So you can now get a wedge for this telescope and you won't have to, to buy an equatorial mount and you can still auto guide and get really good astrophotography pictures. So I thought that was really, really cool that they made the Evolution wedge compatible with the Nexstar wedge. It has really, really good ergonomics and the adjustments are really precise so that you don't have to struggle while getting a polar alignment. So that's uh, the reason you can put a, an auto guider on this guy is you can buy a wedge for it. And I thought that was pretty cool and you can tell the hand controller to auto guide. So what are some things that I would recommend to go with this telescope after using it for such a long time? Well, the first thing I would get is a Celestron 2-inch XLT star diagonal, which allows you to use 2-inch eyepieces. Uh, that is a huge upgrade. Yeah, it's a little bit more heavy. You just need to slide your telescope up a bit to compensate. Uh, but 2-inch eyepieces will open up your telescope to, I don't know, just a realm of seeing. You can see so much more with 2-inch eyepieces. They're so much easier to observe through, and they just look awesome too. So. Explorer Scientific's a really good brand to go to for two inch eyepieces. They're uh, affordable generally compared to other brands and they make really good two inch eyepieces and you can get them from several varying degree ranges, you know, from 70 degrees to 82, all the way up to like 120 degrees. So two inch eyepieces are a huge plus for this telescope. Another huge plus is a focal reducer. Now, focal reducers, I've made two videos on them and how they work and specifically the Celestron one. And it's been a great product because it allows you to do astrophotography at f6.3, so you can bring in a lot more light. And when you're doing visual work, it allows you to stop down the telescope uh, by a factor of 6.3 as well, so you pick up a lot more sky. So it just makes observing great when you're not looking at planets. So whenever I'm not looking at planets, the focal reducer is on my telescope, and they, they uh, like I said, they're just... Uh, a critical piece of a telescope. So I'd highly recommend two inch eyepieces and a focal reducer. So over the years, what are some things that I really don't like about the telescope? And there's a few of them. And when I say I really don't like them, I really don't like them. Number one, the red dot finder really is a piece of crap. <laughs> there's no other way really to, to say that any better. When you put that on a star and you're trying to get it adjusted to get your telescope and the red dot finder looking at the same place, it, it basically it runs out of travel. The, the dot won't move far enough and it's just really low quality plastic. It's just it's really n no good at all. Uh, so I like to use a, a finder like a guide scope or you know a, a, just a normal finder scope, slide it out, put the finder scope in and find my star that way. Makes life so much easier with this telescope. Uh, all you need to do is just get an Orion Schmidt Cassegrain adapter for your mounting bar, bar here. It's super simple to install. It takes two minutes. You just undo two screws, put two new ones in, and you have uh, a better finder scope, just like that. So that's a huge plus right there. Really terrible, really terrible red dot finder. Another thing that is just really bad is the focuser. Now you can't expect to have you know an amazing you know Crayford or something on here right from the start. Uh, it's it's I mean, it's decent, but you're never really going to get a crisp focus with it. It's really, really mushy. Uh, you don't really get like a crisp clicks or anything like that. Um, and it's just not, not a very good focuser at all. It's just a little squishy. Uh, the other thing that I really don't like too much is this single fork arm design. And it's okay. But when you're carrying the telescope on the fork arm, sometimes you can wiggle it a little bit and it, it shifts in the saddle. So it's kind of prone to falling out if this isn't done down tight enough. Uh, so I really like the two fork arm design better, like the CPC series. That obviously adds weight though, number one, and number two, it's a lot more expensive. 
So it's a good design. You just got to really make sure that you don't shift the saddle at all and that you're, you're really tight down on your OTA so that it's not moving. But besides that, uh, there really isn't too much that's you know, not great about it. The, the star diagonal, yeah, it's just okay. They're not going to send you one. You know, that's amazing. That comes with the telescope. The eyepiece is the same way. They're not that great. Uh, but they'll do the job for a while, and then you can upgrade those as time goes on. But as, as the years have gone by, the motors have lasted, and that's the most important part, and the gears and everything have been great. And so that makes the telescope really reliable and durable and makes for a happy customer. Some other minor upgrades that I would recommend are some uh, Celestron vibration suppression pads. They have gone up in price since when I purchased them over the years, but they actually are really effective and you can use them for multiple telescopes. So if you have several telescopes, a good pair of vibration suppression pads is nice, or you can make your own. A dew shield is another really good uh, upgrade that you can get, and maybe replace the focuser eventually if you can afford to do so. If you're gonna do astrophotography, I highly, highly, highly recommend the Orion uh, Starshoot Auto Guider. It's really simple, really easy to use with the, this basic package. It's just called the uh, Mini Magnificent Auto Guider Package, I believe. It comes with a 50 millimeter guide scope and the Auto Guider, and it works really, really well. So that's, a, that's something I'd recommend, especially if you're using a focal reducer. If you're not using a focal reducer, you'll want to get a guide scope that's longer in focal length. But for this setup, it works really nice. All right, guys. Well, that's my follow-up review of the Celestron Nexstar 8SE. As you can see over the years, it has held up really well. Motors still go strong. Uh, it's an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain, so what, what more could you want? I'll basically always have one in my inventory just because they're so portable light and pick up so much light. They're really like a, a do-all telescope. So I'd highly recommend it. They're extremely upgradable. You know, you can put a, a Wi-Fi link in here, a GPS link, power tanks. Basically, you name it, you can put it on it. And the, for the price, they're really good telescopes. So about $1,200 US dollars. Uh, usually every holiday season, they go on sale to about $1,000 US dollars, including this season. I already saw that they went on sale. So if you're thinking about picking one up, uh, now would be a good time to do so during the holidays. And uh, you would be you know, wise to do so because they are awesome telescopes. There's nothing really bad to say about them over four years and they've lasted really really well so thanks so much for watching and uh take care